All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo IdeaPad 3 15 IML05. All right, so we're going to be using a JIS-1 screwdriver. If you don't have JIS-1, a PH-1 will most likely work just fine. All right, we're going to remove all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. So the way you do that, you put them flat side down like that on your desk in the pattern you remove them. So you got three here, three here, and four down here. And that's how I keep track of them. All right, so let's go ahead and remove all these screws. If this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, so let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. <clears throat> So the hard drive on here is failing. Um, if I go in the task manager while it's running, um, it shows 100% disk utility uh, usage, even though it's not really doing anything. So that's how we know that the SSD is failing. Um, in this case, because I used an external boot device to do the cloning, I did have to turn off um, secure boot, which is in the security option in the BIOS. If you're wondering how to get to the BIOS, there's a button on the side here, which is the one key recovery button. When you press that, it goes to the um, different boot options, the boot menu, um, BIOS, and all those kinds of things, and start normally, all right? And then also the recovery. But anyways, once we got the screws out, um, if you're wondering how to press that button, I didn't mention, but you can use like a SIM card eject tool, a needle, a pin, whatever works for you, all right? I don't want this computer to turn itself on, so turn off. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I use my fingernails in the gap here, okay? And then I push with my thumb on the palm rest. Be careful not to press on the touchpad. Okay, so just like this and push. And as you can see, the clips are popping out just like that. We're gonna go on the side over here as well and pop that out and there we go. All right, so we got most of this up. We're gonna carefully close this down, All right? We're gonna work our way up these sides. So lift this up and then I just run my fingernail along here. You can use plastic pry tools to do this. All right, you don't have to use fingernails obviously. And then we're going to go around here and pry this up as well, okay? If it's not popped all the way out, you might have to kind of work at it, but there we go. <clears throat> all right, while we're pulling this up, again, we're going to kind of just run my fingernail along there, and there we go. Sometimes the back here might be clipped in, so if that's the case, use your fingers to pull on it, and then I use my palm to push. So basically, we're kind of rotating it like this, and that should unclip those clips but there we go we got the whole thing out here you can see what the inside looks like <clears throat> there is an m.2 pcie mvme slot here i cloned the hard drive to this um ssd so i did that in advance it didn't come with a screw so we did have to um get a screw to mount the um <clears throat> ssd i believe you can probably take a screw from here <clears throat> excuse me why is my throat all <clears> throat> Let me see if it's the same. Actually, <clears throat> these screws are actually thinner, so you don't want to use those. But you can get away with using the case screws, one of the shorter ones from the bottom here. If you don't mind having a missing screw there, you can actually use that screw to hold the SSD in place. All right. I have um, spare screws for this type of stuff, so I didn't need to do that. I'm going to install the SSD here. I'm going to put it underneath the wireless antennas let me actually zoom in here so you guys can see better okay so we're gonna get it underneath the wireless antennas first all right slide that in get that into place okay and then it goes in at an angle like this then you lower this down and then we're gonna go ahead and tighten the screw into place so all right, we're not going to be using the spinning hard drive anymore because that disk drive um, does ca can cause problems if it's dying. Um, it can actually slow the whole computer down. So we're going to actually disconnect that. The cable is right here. When I first um, worked on this, the cable was actually crooked and that could have actually also been causing some problems. But either way, upgrading to an SSD makes a big difference. So I highly, highly recommend upgrading to an SSD even if your hard drive is fine. So we're going to disconnect the screws for the battery here. All right. The battery, um, you don't technically need to remove it for most upgrades. But if you're doing anything with this screen, you want to be careful. Disconnect the battery. 
open up the laptop and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds. So I'll show you that process. We're gonna lift up the battery here. I'm gonna go underneath, use my finger um, under the cables here, okay? So we'll get underneath the cables and then I'll use my other finger on top to help pull it, sandwich it together and kind of wiggle this as you kind of pull. And there we go. So basically I hold the thing like that and then I kind of wiggle and pull it out. Make sure to keep note of the battery connector. You can see the red wires are going towards this side and the black wires are going towards that side. Um, if you buy a new battery, you want to make sure it's not like twisted and flipped over. <clears throat> battery model number, if there is one, let's see here. Um, here you go, is L16L2PB3. Okay, there you go. That's the battery model number right there. Set the battery aside. Again, I'm gonna carefully open up the computer. The reason why you wanna slowly carefully do it is because now that the bottom cover's off, it's missing the screw there and there. So there's not as much um, leverage for the hinge to hold onto the screen or the cover. And if you open and close it quickly, you can crack the plastic and break it. Okay, again, we're gonna hold the power button for 15 seconds or longer. And this is very important, especially if you're doing anything with the screen cable, screen connectors. And also it makes it safer if you happen to accidentally drop something on the board. Okay, usually for replacing most components, you don't really need to disconnect the battery, but um, to be safe, you can do that. All right, you got the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery here. You can see how it's connected. All right, I'm not gonna pull this out, um, but it has these little wings just like the other battery, con or not the battery connector, but like other connectors. And you kind of just wiggle it as you pull it out. Make sure you're just pulling the, um, the battery connector itself, not the part that's uh, attached to the motherboard because there's also the plastic attached to the motherboard. All right, um, there's only one slot for RAM and then the other RAM is soldered to the motherboard right here. We're gonna pull these two tabs to the side. The RAM pops up like that and I'll pull this out. This is DDR4 memory. Let's see, PC4 3200AA. It's an eight gig stick, so I believe there's probably eight gigs soldered to the motherboard for 16 gigs total. If you want, you can upgrade this RAM. I believe there's 16 gig sticks. Um, again, it's PC4 3200 AA. So as long as you put that, you should be okay speed wise. Um, usually people don't need more than 16 gigs of RAM, so don't just start upgrading your RAM for no reason unless you're actually running out. The way you know you're running out is if your RAM actually gets really close to full, um, your computer will just all of a sudden go super slow. Um, so if you're opening a whole bunch of stuff and then all of a sudden it goes slow, then you probably need to upgrade your RAM. Other than that, most likely you don't. Most likely you won't. All right, anyways, the LCD LVDS cable connector is right there. And then they have this connector that's kind of attached. It's one piece. It looks like it goes through the same wire. Um, and this is likely for the camera and the microphones. All right, and or maybe the touchscreen. Um, yeah, so I don't want to mess around and unplug stuff and start turning it on, but it might be for the touchscreen or it might be for the cameras. Uh, if you're having issues with either of those, you can try unplugging it and plugging it back in and see if that helps. CPU is soldered to the motherboard, so you can't upgrade it. Some models, it looks like they have a GPU here with the GPU memory and then the um, GPU die, but uh, this model doesn't have that, so it's just going straight from there to there. All right, obviously the fan. Then you got the connector here for the fan. That same thing, you kind of just grab and wiggle this and then you can pull it out. I don't want to pull that out, so I'm going to leave that in. If you want to see how these are removed, if you don't know how from just looking at it and kind of me explaining, I have videos showing this on a lot of other ones where I replace the fans and batteries and other things, and you can watch those and it will help you figure it out. Got the wireless card here. Antennas, to remove them, you pull up from the tail, all right, from the back end kind of get as close as you can and pull it up. Don't try and pry it up from this end, okay? And the model number of this wireless card is AX201NGW, if you need that for some reason. All right. There's a two and a half inch SATA hard drive here. Again, we're gonna disconnect this. There's four screws holding it. If you take the battery out, then you only need to take these other two screws out. Um, after that, there's this metal caddy tray that holds the hard drive in place you'll take those four screws out to remove it i'm just going to leave this in here but i'm going to disconnect the cable here so that it's no longer actually connected to the computer so we're going to flip this latch up i don't know if you saw that black latch that i lifted and then we're going to pull this cable out it is held down here with some adhesive so i guess i'm going to have to peel this adhesive up okay and be careful 
hold that down again earlier this was kind of crooked it was like this all right when i first saw it so yeah anyways we're going to pull this out because we're not going to be using that if the customer wanted extra storage they can add a, another two and a half inch sata hard drive but again it's not really necessary um, and i'm just going to tuck this underneath here if it lets me yeah so i just tuck this connector underneath so that way the pins aren't like touching down on here and shorting something out so now that it's underneath the motherboard and the plastic is just touching it it should be fine okay so what else we got we got this connector here for the io board input output board that connects to the motherboard underneath these the wireless card and this card the ssd all right and that's for the sd card slot uh one key recovery button and then the headphone jack 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone jack whatever you want to call it um, it also connects the speakers here. So the speaker connects at, at this one cable, goes down here. It's just held in with rubber. So you can actually just lift these out though. There are these plastic things that stick out a little to make it hold itself in place, but you can just kind of like pop them out if you just pry it up. I don't want to mess with it too much. All right. And then the cable runs along here to the other speaker. So that's how the other speaker connects. And same thing, you can just pop this out as you can see. All right. Um, Keyboard connector is here. There's a latch here that you flip on this side. Uh, trackpad cable connector here. Flip this latch up. Also, if you didn't notice, there's some adhesive here as well that was holding this cable in place. It made it a little bit difficult to remove. But um, I think that's pretty much all there is in here. So not really much else to go on. Um, the charge port DC jack is soldered to the motherboard, so be careful with that because if you break it, it's going to be a pain to repair, especially if you don't solder. If you don't know how to solder, then you're going to have to bring it somewhere. Um, but yeah, anyways, we're going to go ahead and put this thing back together, put the battery back in, and we're going to power it up. Hopefully, it will boot the uh, M.2 SSD uh, because we did just do an exact clone. I'm going to go ahead and line these connectors back up for the battery and then pinch it back into place. Make sure this goes back in and we'll screw these back down. All right, not much else there. I am going to turn the secure boot back on because I did disable it uh, when I was working on this um, in order to use my clone utility as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I did see the SSD show up during the cloning, so should work just fine. Just get everything lined up now, push everything back down, click it all back into place. Okay, and then we'll get all the screws back in and we should be good to go. So again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Again, every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, other than that, you're welcome to stay as I get all these screws back in and boot back into the BIOS. And yeah, all right, let's get all these screws in. All right, also these screws at the bottom, if I didn't already mention, are shorter than all the rest. But again, it's always a good idea to keep all the screws in order um, by putting them in the pattern that you removed them. And yeah, let's get the last two screws in. And then let's boot into the BIOS and make sure the setting is set properly. Okay, they're done with that. Let's flip this over. We're gonna use a needle or a pin on the side. Again, or a sim eject tool, whatever you wanna use to push that little button there and then that should power it on into the boot options you'll see in a few seconds it's going to pop up here you go and then i'm going to go to the bio setup here and i'm going to turn off safe or secure boot so security secure boot and then re-enable it all right that's it save changes we're going to boot it up it should start up normally and that's pretty much it. Let's see. If I see the little thing start spinning, we should be good to go. Yep. All right. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I will see you all in the next one. All right. Let's drop this. Bye.